Yo. We got a ride plane peekaboo. I'm already seeing one exhaust valve a little bit higher than the other. Look inside there. Valve's missing. I'm gonna take the head off and then gonna look at the bottom end. Let's see how this thing looks. Just looking through here, I can see some pieces. It's gonna be interesting. Before I take the head off, if you notice, this engine's got performance parts. One of the exhaust valves is uh, a little bit longer than the other. So that way you got less brack pressure on your exhaust stroke. John Deere doing some incredible things with their motors. So I got the cylinder head pulled off, and just as I suspected, yeah, we got parts. So yeah, there we go. And I have a short on there on my YouTube. I just, I posted it before this video because I've got a 12-year-old sense of humor. Go ahead and watch it if you're bored. And let's be honest, if you like motors, you've got a 12-year-old personality. Who doesn't? So we're gonna keep going into this motor. We're gonna see what is going on. It should be pretty entertaining with a hole that size out the side. I love having fun and being entertained with someone else's expense. All right, here we go. And that's what it looks like. If you squint hard enough, it starts to look like my wife's potato salad. Shouldn't have said that she watches this channel. But yeah, where are we going? We got all sorts of goodies down inside there. Well, finally done with the teardown. So we got this hole. It looks not terrible. This uh, obviously sleeve's gone. Most of the ring is there, so we might have had compression. Uh -huh. But the block is actually in good shape. As far as the oil ring on the bottom, it doesn't look... I'll get into it another time. But it looks like I could possibly fix this. Because if that oil ring at, at the bottom, if that's bad, then, then the block is shot. I wouldn't even mess with it. But with this, I might just have to take a piece of cast iron, grind it to fit here, and then experiment with lock and stitch. The crack continues all the way over to here. So I might mess with it. We'll see, but I got all the parts out of it that I can. The connecting rod that the piston blew up on isn't in that bad of shape. It's going to be fine. Everything else is getting washed up. The cam is a maybe. There was a lot of stuff that was uh, ground into it, lots of debris. So I'll check that the services thoroughly, see if the cam is okay. You might as well reuse what you can. Crank is surprisingly pretty good. This is the part that broke. This, it's that rod, but it's fine. There's nothing wrong in there. So I'll have to check it for straightness, make sure everything's fine. But all in all, I've already got a new block for it. Or new to me. That one right there. So this one was on fire. But we'll uh we'll get it get this one torn apart, use the block. And uh yeah. Then I got that one to take apart, four cylinder. Two more V10s on pallets to do. Lots to do. So a fun customer's vehicle. 
No, we do not do side-by-side -side repair. Finally looked at the cylinder head, and man, is that exciting. The hat is gone on this one. This one's just a little out of round. I think I can fix it. But yeah, that's that's just done. And, and then even worse. I mean, look at that. I've seen bad valve guides, but I think that's tops. So we'll pressure check it. See if there's any cracks. Hopefully this head's still good. These heads are not cheap. They are worth putting some time into. So we're going to find out and see how this is going to go. Back at it. So we're looking at the connecting rods for this blown up 6068. And one thing I did notice was there was some twist in it. So this was the bad rod. And we had some twist this way and oh that's bend and then we had twist well I got bend and twist fixed but then I thought you know I better make sure to make sure that this is okay so I've got one that here that is a known good rod when I measure it If you can see it, we've got five inches and 682. Six, 675 to 682, that's kind of what I've been getting. When I go to measure this one, significantly shorter. That's 635 right there. So that is like 50 thousandths shorter. And I could see it with the naked eye. So it's not a surprise when I measured it and saw that it was completely off. But yeah, you can see, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's bent like this. So I'll twist it. I'll mess with this end, but when it comes to bending it that way, there's just too much wrong with it, and it's just scrap metal at this point. So I'm going to give up on that one and get a new one. I don't have footage of it, but what actually caused it was the head had K-liners in it. And if you look at another one of my shorts, which is something I like to do, is called I Hate K-liners. And so far, it's the second case that I've had in a while. I, I see it all the time, but this time K-Liners actually caused this engine to fail because, this, because the valve guy wore out so much that the valve went to the side, snapped, tumbled around, and blew up everything in there. I, so I just, I hate K-Liners, that's all there is to it. I wanted to add this into the video. I didn't have footage of it, and I was lazy. I didn't want to make more, and I wanted to edit it so I could get it on here for you guys. So enjoy this picture of a goat. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. See you next time.